Okay, we're looking for a bay tree. Hot diggy kadarn. There we go. One. I know it calls one, but we're going to grab two. And two. Okay, our ingredients today for the Paciano pigeon is going to be two pigeons. I'm going to cut them up, I'm going to quarter them up. One third cup of flour, one tablespoon, oh, sorry, one teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of sunflower oil, half pound of uh, tomatoes, canned, an onion, we'll throw in half a bell pepper, a cup of uh, sliced mushrooms, one clove of garlic, a bay leaf, and two sprigs of parsley. We'll get the bay leaf here shortly. We'll get it fresh. All right. Okay, so far I've cut up the peppers, sliced them, sliced up the onion, and we'll throw the whole onion in there. Okay, we got the mushrooms cut up. That's a bit, that's quite a bit more than, that's a lot more than what they called for. <clears throat> I like mushrooms, so I guess it'll do all right. I minced up the, the garlic. Now, you're in the woods, you got a can. You ain't got a can open. A lot of guys take their knives, all the rest of stuff. Well, this is the greatest little thing since, since sliced bread. It's called the, ready for this? Boy Scout Pocket Knife. This one is almost as old as I. In fact, it was mine from when I was a Boy Scout. It has this handy dandy little gizmo called a can opener. So, should open that up. This little thing right here works better than the military P38 as far as I'm concerned. Now, I've used it a lot longer and it lasts. This thing's, let's see, I'm 50. This thing's almost 40 years old then because I was 11 when I joined the Boy Scout. Well, actually, I was. 10. My dad was a scout master. I probably think I got this knife even before then. So, this is how you use it. It takes a little bit, but, you know. We're not at the house, we're not in civilization. We're in Shea Redneck uh, Cafe, aka the um, chuck wagon, aka the truck. So I a lot of AKAs on that. So I'm sure you have seen this in paintings. Can't open up thusly. Well, that's how I got that way. Okay, I just quartered up one of the pigeons. As you see, quarter means four pieces. Not counting the heart. This is the one that I shot. Um, I rested after thawing out the, uh, the birds. Um, I read that when you got these things frozen, it does them a lot of good if you, what they said, rest them in milk, which to me means, you know, throw them back in a bag full of milk and uh, see how that turns out. Well, it, it brings the, the meat, and it does. That meat does not look like it has ever been frozen. It brings the meat right back. So we're going to quarter this one up here shortly, and we'll get back to cooking. Okay. Quartering. Let's get rid of that neck first. Throw it in the pot, but don't really want it hooked up just yet. All right, take a hind quarter. Cut. Just like quartering up a chicken. Okay, see that? All the way down that meat. Same thing here. Okay. Got that down to there. Put the knife in there, right through the spine, takes that, right here, right down the center of that spine, there you go. Now, instead of cutting off all the wings and stuff, I'm literally going to quarter this. So, we'll take it. From the inside, see how much easier that is? Just right straight through, through the breastbone. Okay, we got the fire going on the for the Passiano um, pigeon, and I got the fry pan in there. 
with lid on it. The quarter cup of sunflower oil is in there heating up. I've already got the quartered pigeons inside the bag with the, um, with the flour and salt shook up so in a little bit we will brown it. Okay that grease is good and hot. Bring these birds in start browning them all the way around. Well, right now um, everything's cooking. I put in the tomatoes, I put in the onions, the bell peppers, the garlic. Um, sorry I couldn't film it. Had a little hiccup with the camera. And uh, in the midst of trying to do all that, and so we'll either, see either throw everything in and start cooking because the meat's already cooking. And this isn't a, a gas stove, I just can't turn it off. But anyways, everything's in cooking. I got the lid on it. Um, I got it as close to what I can figure is low. It's going to sit in there and cook for half an hour and uh, ish because we're cooking with the fire and the controlling heat on the fire is an ish. And uh, then I'll lift the lid off of it for 15 minutes ish and <laughs> let it cook a little bit more. And um, once that's done, We'll have the opportunity to uh, clean up the dining room, set the table, have our candlelight gourmet Shea Redneck Florida Cracker exotic food. And hope that you enjoy your share of the pigeon, as I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy, enjoy mine. This is the first time I've made this recipe. But as you notice, we used the whole pigeon, we quartered it up. And, uh, well, let's give it a little time and see how it turns out. Okay? Okay, let's check this. Oh, yeah. All right, all you naysayers. That is looking good, just about ready. There we go. Alciano pigeon. Let's see how that tastes here in the morning. I'll wait until it quits making that noise. I don't know if I want to put that in my mouth just yet. A little hot. Ain't learned how to cook cold yet. Well, <clears throat> we seem to have our Alciano pigeon, our gourmet dinner out here in the woods. We've got our table set. There's only one thing that we're missing. You know, in order to really enjoy a gourmet meal, there's one thing that, well, we all know we need. And though I am out here, no, I'm not really alone, you're with me. So, let's have a little candlelight dinner, shall we? <laughs> well, got our pigeon, got our candlelight, got our fine libation, got our implements of destruction. Let's uh, give this a little taste, shall we? Mushrooms are good. Let's try. So we can get a little bit of rest here. No problem. Eating things like this is uh, a lot of times you got so much stuff over it that you really, oh, it smells good. Go ahead with it. Mm. 
bit of brush, that's good. Got a leg and thigh here. The only fault, the only problem I could foresee is the fact that I cooked it over over a fire instead of well, got a bit of wishbone. That's um, that's tasty. Well, go to show finger looking good. I think the fact that I did it in a fire Dutch oven recipe called for by the instructions to be done over a stove, but that was not available to me today. But the woods always is. I'll tell you what, I'm going to enjoy this very much. So I'm supposed to bring a little bit back, but. I don't foresee that happen. <laughs> well, we got our gourmet meal. I'll be honest with you, I think in a Spanish restaurant, this dish would probably run you, if you were in Spain, equivalent to probably about 50 or 60 bucks. I got it. Price of two pellets. Plus the Vidalia onion, you know, the accoutrements went with it. But, the dining room here, I would say would far surpass the dining room in any restaurant anywhere in the world. Nothing better than being out in the woods. With a gourmet meal, good friends like you. I'm a lucky man indeed. All right, this is Keith Stanball of the School of Woodlawn Common Sense. I thank you for watching my videos. I hope that you enjoyed this one. Um, I sure did. Uh, it's definitely, I'm going to enjoy this. Y'all have a, a good day, a good weekend, a good week, good year. May be profitable. May everyone be able to get back on their feet good and um, enjoy. Let's eat, let's do some eating, shall we? <laughs> oh yeah, this is good stuff. Mm. Brush, good name. Gosh, see how dark that is. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Coon's gonna love me tonight. Some vegetation. I almost forgot. <clears throat> I did forget. Back to pigeon. <laughs> oh, yeah.